Coming up in this video, we're going to give you the ultimate guide to swing trading, guys. It's uh, a topic that uh, anyone who has a full-time job or a part-time job, whatever, may be very interested in because they're not going to need to be in front of a computer all of the time. So let's jump right into it here because there's a lot to get through. And the first thing I think we need to do is really tell people what is a swing trade? You hear that term swing trade. Let's figure out what defines a swing trade first. Neil. Exactly. And I think, uh, look, it's a bit of a loose term, and I know people uh, try to interchange it and have different definitions. But simply, um, you have day trading, which is getting into a position and then covering that same position within the same day, maybe even multiple times. Uh, you have investing, which is I'm buying a company based on, you know, maybe it'll be fundamentals, maybe it's just because I happen to like the way the iPhone looks, whatever it might be. Uh, but you plan on holding on to that as a long-term investment for years, uh, potentially. And, and sometimes that can be like quarters. Swing trading is that happy medium. At times, a swing trade could simply be holding a couple of days. It could be holding a couple of weeks. You could be buying something uh, you know, a week before earnings. Um, or you could have a defined entry and exit uh, where I'm playing momentum based on some type, of a, some type of a moving average break, which we'll get into, and then I'll simply put a stop order. I'm not intending on holding on to that stock for a, for a year, but as long as it's uh, you know, working in the money and above that stop level, I want to be in that trade for the short term. So you know, it's not that day trade, um, and it's not that long-term investment. It's that happy medium, which is fantastic for people who are looking for that second passive income but might have a full-time job. Okay, so now we understand exactly what we're talking about here. The next step is going to be how do we come up with, you know, what stocks do we look at to, to get into a swing trade? If we're looking at, you know, a multiple day type of idea, Sean, give us a couple of ideas here on how we can maybe filter down our universe uh, to a possible group of stocks to swing trade. Perfect. I, I think that uh, a great, great intro there, Brendan. Thank you so much uh, for that. And I think that's the most important thing. When you're swing trading, you need to pick a stock, a sector, something that's hot. Because if you're just going to sit there, in, and I'm not picking on General Electric, but something that really doesn't have sort of the swing abilities to it, really no news around it, something like that. Uh, and, and again, we just randomly picked that stock. You may not get the action you're looking for, and then you have like time decay, right? Like you're trying to swing trade, but nothing's really happening. So I actually have a great example here, and that's going to be Ford. Um, so again, let, let's, let's go back. Is it a hot stock? Yes, it is. And why is that? Right now with the pandemic, automotive on everybody's mind. Are people buying more cars? Are they selling cars? Are they buying used cars? Who knows? Are people going back to work? Are they going to take public transportation? Or are they going to invest in maybe a new vehicle? So we have that aspect of Ford. And now we also have the EV, you know, part of Ford. They just turned yesterday in Investor Day that, you know, 40% of their fleet as of 20. 2030, I believe, is going to be EV space. So look at this. Here you go. So we look at Ford. You know you like, you know you like Ford. So we've picked that name. We don't want to go with a Neo. We don't want to go with a Lordstown. We want to stick with a name that, hey, does have some potential to move to the upside on some news. So we know the F-150 is a very popular truck. So we pick Ford. Look at this dip down here. This is off earnings. Right now, there's a semiconductor shortage, so they get hit on earnings. What I look for is a base, right? Some kind of consolidation. We have that here on Ford. So comes back down, makes this base at 11, 11.25. So to me, if we have the catalyst, we have the right name, and now we have a setup on the chart. So for me, that's a go. Now, we don't know if we want to hold Ford for a longer term, right? But we do know that we're approaching this 50-period moving average. That's a big indicator for me. And we have these bottoms. So I actually tweeted out and put this out there that we went long 11.31 in here, basically for a back move, to VWAP, which happened, which is, this is the 50 period, sorry, not VWAP. That happens, and then it actually doesn't even give us a chance to get out. It breaks right through, and then yesterday we had Investor Day, so that's another catalyst, bang. Also, you have a 52 week high here. So this gives us all of this swing opportunity. So 11.30 just back, May 13th, so we're in about two weeks now, upside, and now you have that break of the high, and in my opinion, if you're swing trading, which is what we're talking about here, you have that break, that's your first indicator, then you break the high, now's probably a time to think about pairing off some of this position, you've now been in it for two weeks, you have a beautiful, like you're up 30, 40%, you know, depending on where you're in, 40% upside on Ford in two weeks, that's a great swing trade, so you have the right sector, 
and the right name, along with some technical indicators there that give you that bottom so you have a little bit of risk, and then you get that upside explosion. I think you got to take that 40% in two weeks. 40% in two weeks is absolutely fantastic. And then it comes down to, look, uh, you want to make sure you're defining your trade uh, with a swing trade. And we said in the, at the beginning, um, you can have that maybe maybe you're selling in front of earnings like maybe it's a time period uh, which is the trade that you're going to be holding into or could be uh, in front of like an options expiration something along those lines or you simply might have a stop so you want to think about your entries and your exits if you're looking at that 50 period which I know uh, Sean will, will favor on a daily chart I'll show you here on Boeing uh, just to give you an idea now this is going to go back to when uh, you had a big move through 160 it, it breaks above that 50 period you get a nice little close higher you know anywhere in the next following day you enter that swing type of a trade now it could be at the open in this particular case you would have gotten right here 184 I mean certainly if you're not going to take the opening trade it could be a dollar or two difference here no problem you start thinking about where is your exit going to be could be previous support at 140 I mean you might think that that's a little bit uh, too far to the downside or you simply have a break uh, of what the current 50 period would be at that 162 now in this particular case you've got your entry about 10 to 15 percent worth of risk a lot of people will look at one and a half or maybe it's two uh, to one when it comes to a window loss ratio. That's something you want to back test on each individual strategy and make sure you separate these by sector. Some move a little bit faster than others. Boeing being cyclical, you know you got that entry, you're letting it move the candle, closing the above that 50 period. It has to close above, and then you look to enter the next, uh, the next day. It clearly holds support. You could have put that same trade on again here. You go a few months down the line, you're going to see it break. You're going to see it not break the 50 period or the previous support level here on the chart. So either which way you did it, that's going to work out for you. The last time, and this is sort of key, it breaks the 50 period here, and then you don't get the close above. So no entry. And the only reason I use this example today is because, wow, look at that. Decent chance, barring some kind of uh, unforeseen circumstance, you would get another close above that 50 period. It's going back to the upside. With a strategy like this, are you getting the absolute bottom? Not really, but you have a defined entry that you can go and back test, um, that you can also carry forward with you. It allows you to be disciplined. You can find yourself a good stop. Uh, so those are two ways to structure your trade, entries and exits. And when you're testing, you want to make sure there's something very tangible and, and obvious that you can go back test with. All right, so a lot of great uh, ideas there and concepts to consider. But again, as Neil was saying, make sure you test, 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 test before you go live in the market. To wrap things up here, we're going to give you something not to do or make sure you uh, do your best to avoid. And that is a common mistake that happens when beginners start to swing trade. And that is it starts to go against you and then it goes a little bit further against you. And then six months goes by and you're now holding a, an investment, really. So what we want to try and avoid, guys, is having... Swing trades as swing trades and investments as investments. Give us your take on how we can avoid doing this. Okay, I mean, this, this is important because I've done it myself. I think any trader that's active, uh, trader, I've been managing my own money now for 20 years. So there is, you know, a possibility that you, you get into a position that you like and then it starts going against you. You don't really know what to do. Next thing you know, you're averaging in. You only meant to have it for like that one news story that you thought was going to happen. The next thing you know, you've lost 50% of your money and uh, there is no story. So you got to get out when things do not go your way. I want to talk about QuantumScape here just real, real quick. So I actually made a play into the Swing account and we talked about this live on the show when we made this play and it was right here. So QuantumScape was right here off earnings. So QuantumScape here, you can see the bottoms. Forget about this. It's a new SPAC. But we saw some bottoms here. So um, going back to that Ford trade, right? So here's the bottom. Here's the bottom here. So 41.42, okay? So it makes a move up off this play. So it goes from 42 right up to the 50 period of 52, then fades back in, and then they have earnings in here. So what happens to me? I say, you know what? Let's go long QuantumScape right in this area, 41.42, right? Hoping that, again, history repeats itself. Comes down here, upside, bang, what a good winner. You're so good at trading. Then he comes back down here, you take it again. Wow, that's good, man. Three times a charm, we'll take it again. Let's test it the fourth time, okay? But then what happened was a short seller report came out, Scorpion came and said basically that QuantumScape, a fraud, you can read about it, doesn't matter, but that they didn't have the goods that they thought they'd have. Look at this move, downside, down to 30, makes a bounce back up. Back down, down, down. And now it's $23. So all of a sudden, this $41 hold, Brendan, that you had right there, 
you know, something changes and now all of a sudden you're just waiting for that five or six dollar bump so you could get out, right? I mean, that's the call. You want to make your quick little money and get out of there. But unfortunately, you don't. And that never happens because here's the move. You don't even have a chance to get out. Well, as soon as something material changes, and that's the point, there was a short seller report that came out changed the stock we were able to get out and again it was happening live on the show we got out 38 39 dollars something around this area and then we didn't have to worry about this move down so if you're swing trading you have to have tighter stops and you have to pay attention to the recent news whether or not it be earnings or some kind of a report like that it's such a great uh, uh, topic and a great uh, point you make there and that is if the reason that you're in the trade is no longer there is no longer you know relevant you just get out of the trade. You get out of the trade, you reevaluate, and in this case, a great outcome for Sean, avoiding a much bigger loss. There we go, guys, a little bit on your swing trading guide if you're just starting out on longer term basis. If you like this content, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Here's Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this helpful information. Dear viewers, please subscribe to this channel to see more great videos.